Here they are, the brand new Jones LWB Complete Bikes, version three. I introduced this frame almost 10 years ago as a frame set that we built up as complete bikes or we sold to many people, many of you who built them up into complete bikes. After I introduced the complete SWB bicycle, I had a lot of people asking for an LWB Complete Bicycle. And we introduced that in 2019. And now that was version one. We also came out with another one, version two. Yeah, this version two was a couple of years ago, but we're sold out of most sizes in that right now. And here's version three, new model in a few different parts. It's now available with hydraulic brakes or mechanical brakes with knobby tires or smooth tires. Of course, I have black, the regular standard black. It's a semi-matte, nice black. Or we have the new limited edition purple, 250 worldwide for these in three sizes, small, medium, and large. Be sure to check the sizing. My sizing doesn't align with all the other brands. So if you rode a large before, you may ride a medium on a Jones. Now we're gonna go over the parts right here. Jones SG Loop Aluminum H-Bar in a 710 width. This is the 710 width that has a little, little wider than the original 660 bar where you can slide back all the way. Excellent handlebar, lots of hand positions. These end up on a lot of different bikes besides just Jones. Right there. The grips, these are Jones Craton H grips. They're made out of Craton rubber. It's a synthetic, very durable rubber. They're very thick, they're long, they're eight and a quarter inches long, or 205 millimeters, and they give you enough room for your controls. They're wrapped, Jones handlebar tape, so that you can just move around to the different positions, and stay comfortable, and then still have a place to mount lights or computers and things up here. The bike comes with a Jones stem, it's hollow inside, it's very light, very strong. We have a new seat on the bike. The seat's pretty soft, it's not too wide, not too narrow. This has a bonded cover with no staples. So when you reach under, you don't feel any staples. It's nice and soft. And the cover, it's not a cloth that is stretched over it. It's bonded into the, into the seat itself. It's, it's pretty comfortable. This is the same seat post we've been using. It has an adjustment that is a, a, a proven design that works very well for keeping things from slipping. Even if this screw isn't tight all the way, this seat's not gonna flip up, it can't slide like that. This is a 410 length seat post, so you have a lot of length, but if you don't need that much length, it can be trimmed, it's adjustable. If you tighten the rear screw, the back goes down, vice versa, it rocks like this. A very sturdy design, very durable, lightweight, aluminum, strong bolts, micro adjust. You can do very fine adjustment, it's not clicking back and forth. Jones seat post clamp, made with a big, M6 bolt, stainless steel with a washer for a five millimeter Allen wrench. This is CNC machined from aluminum, black anodized and laser etched with a Jones spec logo. And the drivetrain, the drivetrain is also new on this bike. Have box two derailleur, box three cassette, box three shifter. This is a nine speed drivetrain with a wide range. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine gears, but with a 50 big sprocket and a 11 small. So 11 to 50. So wide range with less gears means you're going to shift less often. When I was testing this stuff, I really liked it because I didn't shift as often. I didn't feel the need to always shift because the next gear was further away. I would stay in one gear and kind of run it out, you know, spin it out and then jump to the next one. And then I found it was kind of nicer to ride that way. A little bit like when I'm riding a single speed, I don't have to worry about shifting as often. I don't have to shift all the time. When obstacles are around, I just kind of run one gear a little longer. Less gears, less shifting. It's a little narrower than a regular 12 speed cassette. So your chain line will be straighter more often on average. It's all steel, even the big gear steel. So it's not gonna break or wear out as quickly as an aluminum one, which you'll find on most cassettes. This is a box two derailleur for the Prime 9 drivetrain. Has a very stiff clutch and it's very solid. I've been testing this a lot and it's very durable. This whole system's very durable. It's the reason I went with this. I was testing this with my high powered test bike. 
trying to break drivetrains and seeing how how strong things were and uh, it turned out this stuff was the toughest. I have the box two derailleur, but I'm using the box three shifter. This is one step lower in pricing than the box two. And the reason I went with this is because it has the same shifting mechanism inside as the box two, and it weighs less than the box two because it uses plastic instead of metal. And it doesn't have a hinge on here. I went with box three instead of box two to save a little bit of weight and to save a little bit of cost because it works just as well. And without the hinge on top, it's a little smoother for when you're resting your hand on the H-bars. Box two chain, this is a tough chain. It's a wider chain. I remember measuring this and it was wider. The plates were thicker. This is an Eagle, SRAM Eagle 0.68. I wonder if the other plate's the same. 0.69, okay, so 0 0.68, 0 0.69. 0 0.97, one. So about a millimeter, there it is, 0 0.99, 0 0.94. So 0.94 versus 0.7 or 0.69. So much thicker difference. You can feel it's a little heavier, but it's nice having a tougher chain. It's, it's nickel plated also, so it looks nice. And you get a quick link. There's the quick link. Excuse me. I remember I was a kid trying to like straighten a chain out once. It just seemed impossible to me. New Jones crank set. These are nice. 6061 T6 aluminum. These now have an aluminum bottom bracket spindle. Really large. This is lighter than before. They're three piece cranks. Both arms come off. They have self extracting crank arm bolts. So you just loosen the eight millimeter and this will pull the crank arm off. This has a direct mount standard for direct mount chain rings. Has a nice aluminum adjustment ring so you can get fine adjustment on your bottom bracket. The small has 165 crank arms. Medium and large have 170 crank arms. Jones spec chain ring. It's made from 7075 T6 aluminum, all CNC machined. It's a lot lighter than the one that's on the V2 bike. Has narrow wide teeth so the chain stays in place. Black anodized with laser etching. And you can go up to a 34, 36, or even a 38 tooth on this bike if you wanted to have really tall gears. Bottom bracket bearing assembly. There's not much to it. You have the, the cups and the bearings in a seal, one for each side. Some information on there to tell you how tight and which way to tighten it. You can see the inside of the bearing right there. We have two options on this bike for brakes, mechanical or hydraulic. This is the Alihanga mechanical brake. It's a very nice brake. I test everything out before I spec it on my bike and I got a set of these, tried them out, and they really work just as well as the BB7s I was using. They, they're very, very nice. I can compare them right here. With the BB7, you turn the brake pads in and out with these knobs like this, in, out, so it moves them in and out, in and out. And this is the Alihanga, it moves by adjusting the inner pad this way. So it's not too hard, you just have to pull out a wrench, and often these are hard to turn anyway. And then on this side, when you want to adjust the brake pad in or out, you do it by adjusting this, which will move this back and forth a little bit. So both pads are adjustable, and it weighs less than this. And also, this is a one-piece design. It's forged out of one chunk of metal. This is made out of two pieces of metal. Some say this would be stiffer. I think it might be. It's a little lower profile, just a little bit. It doesn't stick out as far. One thing I like is it has a lot of reach adjustment. If we compare them to the SD5 brake levers, I have these set in very close right now to the bar, but they're still out further than this. This has a long screw, and you can bring the brake lever back. So it has a good reach adjustment, so you can set it back really far. Also, it has no bolts on top of it, so when your hands are on it, you don't have a bolt sticking up. You can see the way the H-bar is shaped and the way it works, I prefer to have it set up so that I can reach the hook of the lever in this position, not all the way in the back, but right about here, where the 660 bar would be, and then get a full grip of the brake, and I should be able to reach it without reaching for it. If the lever's way out in front and you have to reach for it, then you'll bring it up higher, and it's harder to reach and you can't stop as quickly. Or you have to slide further down to, to grab it. So this is very close and I can still adjust the brake so it's at full lock before it hits the grip. And they have a silicone cover. Very, it's very comfortable. It, it makes a difference. My finger's more comfortable and I kind of have a better grip. My finger doesn't slip. And in cold weather, it doesn't feel cold. Just like all of our bikes have stainless steel, extra slick cables so that they can move nice and easily. 
with very little friction. Also, this has compressionless housing, so you get really firm brakes. It's easy to get brake pads for this because it uses a pretty common size. Magura MT trail brakes, hydraulic brakes, four piston in the front, two piston in the back. So you have a little more brake power up front since your weight shifts forward, you need more braking power in the front. Very nice brake levers with a lot of adjustment. Really nice feel, very nice clamp, uh, very powerful brakes and rebuildable. And they've been around for a long, long time. Basically you have either one set of pistons or two set of pistons. That's gonna give you more stopping power. It really makes a big difference. One finger is all you need and you can really slow the bike down. And on a long wheelbase bike with really big wheels, you can get going fast and you can hit the brakes hard because the bike doesn't want to end as easily. So having big brakes is really useful. A lot of bikes couldn't use these brakes because with skinny tires and the geometry of most bikes, you'd either skid or endo way before you could use these. But with this bike, this helps. Now, both brakes, the mechanical brakes and the hydraulic brakes, front and rear rotors, 203, 180. Bigger power in the front, a little smaller in the back, four piston in the front, two piston in the back. Very good brake system and light. Why would you pick one brake over the other? They both have good reasons to go with them. For the mechanical brake, I like mechanical brakes because you can always fix them, almost always fix them if you, if you learn a little bit about how to adjust them. With mechanical brakes, you can adjust the brake pads very easily, and this can come in handy if your brake pads are rubbing. If you're riding down the road and you hear a scrape, 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 with mechanicals, you can turn out one brake pad all by itself and move it away from the pad on the side that you need to move it on. With hydraulic brakes, you have to loosen the whole brake caliper and these two bolts and move the whole thing side to side. So you can't make a small incremental change. You have to kind of almost lose all of your adjustment and then try to get it right. And it's harder to do that. And also there's usually a smaller gap in there on hydraulics. So for, if you don't mind a little extra weight and you want something that'll last for a very long time and never need really special tools or any bleeding or anything like that, then the mechanicals are great. And they have a, plenty of power as long as you adjust them. They do need to be adjusted more often because as the brake pads wear, they don't self-adjust. So the brake lever will go closer to the bar as the brake pad wears, where hydraulic brakes, as the brake pad wears, the brake lever kind of pumps back out to where it belongs each time. So you don't have to do any adjustments. But with these, you can adjust them. So again, you need to adjust these, but you can adjust them. It's easy to adjust the brake pads separately. These don't need adjustment, but when they need adjustment, there's, not as, there's often not as many adjustments and it's a little harder to do sometimes. And if these go bad, if you end up with a fluid leak or end up with air bubbles inside or something, or if the pistons start to stick or something after so much time, then it requires a, a bigger rebuild. It's a bit more work, a little harder to do. But these weigh less and they feel great when they work great. But they both have good power. I'm gonna go over the wheels on this bike. We have nice, big, wide rims, 50 millimeter wide on the outside, plus size wheel. With eyelets, it's 60, 60, it's extruded 6061 T6 aluminum and has a bead lock right here where the tire bead will kind of slide up from here and pop into this spot right there and hold it in place. So you can run very low pressure and not have the tire burp off. For the hubs, this is the new rear hub. This hub is a tougher hub. You can swap out the free hub on this bike. It comes with an aluminum HG, Shimano HG free hub body, but you can also go to SRAM XD or Shimano Micro Spline. This is aluminum. It has an aluminum axle. So this is lighter than the hub on the last bike, on the V2, so it's saving some weight here. And you can change to a different type of cassette in the future if you want to. And this is a 148 spacing hub, 148 millimeter side to side, 12 millimeter axle, nice secure mounting system. For the front hub, Jones spec 150 spacing hub, very wide flange spacing. You can see it's a lot wider than the rear and it's uh, a lot wider than a conventional hub. And it builds a very strong wheel. Both hubs use all cartridge bearings, nice and light and strong. And we have some big tires. Start with the knobs. This is a 29 by 3.0, so 29 by three inch tire. It does pump up to about three inches. This is a tubeless compatible tire. 
so you can set it up tubeless. I really recommend tubeless. It works much better than tubes. It saves weight. You get less flats. Uh, you have a more efficient tire that can flex a little more easily without the tube inside. Tubeless is a, a good thing. In fact, we've already set this one up tubeless because we've been riding this and it just is nice to not have to worry about tubes. We put a black Jones Schrader valve stem on there. These wheels come with Schrader valve size holes so that you can run Schrader. Schrader's better because it has a much bigger internal diameter for much better airflow. You simply take out the valve core and then you have a lot of space. So this, this really lets you set up the tire quickly because with a tubeless tire, you need to burst a lot of air or blow a lot of air through very rapidly to seat the tire. And this makes it easy. Plus it's very durable. You don't have the little tip band and also it doesn't unscrew accidentally when you remove your pump. So that's just the Jones Strader valve stem. These are available with the bike. If you order one of these bikes, it'll come with tubes. You can ride it with these if you like. They'll work just fine like tubes do. But if you go tubeless, just save one of these and use it for a spare. It's a good spare. Because if you do end up with a flat tire while riding tubeless, which can happen if you get a really big cut in your tire, then the way to fix it is to just put a tube in. So the knobby tire and a smooth tire. And I call them knobby and smooth because they're designed differently and they'll do things differently, but this can work in the dirt, this can work on the street. So I don't want to call this a street tire. Not having knobs will give you a little lighter tire and it'll roll a little more efficiently most of the time, but it also can slide in some wet conditions and muddy, in muddy areas with, or if you try to ride in snow or maybe wet leaves, knobbies will give you a little more traction in loose conditions or soft conditions. This is a slightly smaller, it's 2.8, that's 3.0, so a little smaller, a little bigger. This runs a little quieter, it, it sounds a little quieter. This has just a little bit more hum to it. I prefer knobby tires everywhere because they are better in the dirt, they're great on the street, they work really well on the street, they don't feel any worse than this, really, they just make a little more noise. And because they're bigger, they give me a softer ride, and I can run a little lower pressure because they're bigger. So two different tires to choose from, they're both good for dirt, they're both good for street, that's a little bigger, that's a little smaller, and you can always uh, get an extra set of tires. You can see this bike over here. Here's a Jones Custom Select bike we just finished building, and it's built with our carbon fiber rims, which are a little wider, but there's the same T-Fatty tires. We use these same tires and these same parts on our Custom Select builds. This, though, it has a titanium frame and titanium fork and cranks with a carbon fiber handlebar and carbon fiber wheel set. So it's a, bit, a little bit lighter costs a bit more, but this bike has the exact same geometry and the same body position and the same fit. You could actually have that purple bike and then everything that's on this fits on that. So it's very easy to upgrade that bike. Carbon bars, you could put a tie fork on it. Bags, it's a nice one. This one has a quick release on the seat post. We have these available. I just put a simple bolt on clamp, but a dropper post or a quick release is nice to have too. And you can see this rack mounted. You have the same rack mounting possibilities on the LWB bike. This is the LWB. Now, we've been calling it the Plus LWB. This is Plus LWB, and it's just a name change. I'm just dropping the word Plus because the SWB and LWB are both Plus bikes that they use Plus tires. So now it's just called, this bike is LWB, but this has the same exact geometry and fit as the Titanium bike you just saw there. Here's how a through axle works. It's a little easier than a quick release. Loosen the bolt. The axle is really a big bolt, but it's specially made to be an axle. Slide it out. I usually leave it right about on the end here so I don't drop it. And then the wheel's out. Very secure. Look at that. It goes all the way through, and now it's just like solid. So very simple, very simple setup. Now, Putting it back in place, easy enough, right? Just get the dropouts, uh, the axle sticking in a little bit in there, slide it through. And for the safety, look at this. If this were completely loose and you tried to ride it, your wheel is not gonna fall off. I know you're not gonna do that, but even if we're out to here, your wheel can't fall off. With regular quick release, Working around bikes my whole life. I've seen many 
quick releases that would just spontaneously fail sometimes. They would snap and break because they were open and closed. You know, the quick release lever was open and closed so many times, there would be some stress and it would just pop off and then your wheel's off the bike. Where with this, you never have to have that possibility in the back of your head that your wheel could just pop off there. Just make it nice and tight, super secure. So big axle connection, this is solid. Wide hub, that's solid and secure. The hub makes the spokes have a big angle. So the wheel's being pulled into the center really strongly. And the spokes on both sides are the same length because it has equal spacing from the center. It's a perfect wheel and it makes a difference. You can tell when you're riding quickly and steering kind of with some force that this front end is a little tighter and it doesn't uh, flex as much. I didn't realize how much wheels flex until, until I started using wide hubs like this. Back when I had a 100 millimeter hub on my bike with a front disc brake, the hub spacing was very narrow. The flanges were very narrow and they were offset a little bit. And when I switched to something like this, I first went to 135, I noticed, especially with a big 29 inch wheel, that with hard steering, the front end wasn't doing some of this as much. People always ask me what these bikes are for. Are they made for bike packing or touring? Are they mountain bikes? What are they? And they're Jones bikes, but I can tell you what they're good for. These bikes are good for everything except for sprinting in a road race or riding in Red Bull Rampage. You can use these for riding around your neighborhood or riding around the world, for bike packing, for riding in the city, for riding to work. You could put big bags and racks on them like this and do all kinds of things. You could use them for technical rides. They're great for technical riding. They're just comfortable bikes for everything. You can use them for road riding. Road riding, of course, is riding on the road. If you're not sprinting and you're not racing, these bikes are great for the road. They handle the bumps nicely. You can come in a driveway with a big bump and just with 10 to 15 PSI in your tires, the tires just completely absorb these bumps. Bikes that are designed for the road only or for light off-road use will often pass strength standards that aren't as tough as for mountain bikes. So I make sure all of these bikes are tougher than a mountain bike. Why does the bike have big tires? Not only are they more comfortable, but they provide a lot more traction. They give you a smoother ride. They give you ro lower rolling resistance in soft terrain or bumpy terrain, and uh, even lower rolling resistance on the road sometimes if the road has a, a rough texture because it can absorb all the ripples very easily and lets you keep rolling. When I was developing these bikes, I was riding out in the mountains here in Oregon on some really tight single track trails and some open gravel roads, usually doing kind of a big loop with a big long climb and then some descent in the woods. And I developed this geometry riding like that. It turned out afterwards that it happens to also be really comfortable. I didn't design this to be easy and comfortable and just to be a comfort bike or something, but by making a bike, by developing a bike that I can ride and handle and do the most technical riding and ride as long as I possibly can and be in a position where I don't crash, turns out this is a super comfortable position because you're really light, really light on your hands and you can sit further back on this bike because the seat angle's further back, the head angle's laid back, it has a shorter reach to the bars, so you stand back here on your feet, hold onto the bars, really light on your hands, and you can use all these positions. So this is a great bike to modify if you bought this as it is, and you want to know what do you need to do to it, just have it built and tuned right. It's important to assemble this bike correctly and tune the gears, tune the brakes, and then maintain the bike. But the first upgrade to do is to set it up tubeless. You can go as far as you want with it. You can put racks on it. You can put titanium forks on it. You can put a carbon handlebar on here. What about the frame? Here's the frame. This is from the V2 bike. The frames are the same. This one says plus LWB. This one just says LWB. That's the only difference. It's a really nice frame. It's 4130, all 4130 chromoly steel, TIG welded, hand welded. All the bosses are brazed in position. This is better than welding. It doesn't heat the tube as much. The cable guides are also brazed in. It does have a kickstand mount. I added that because it fit. If you don't want it, it's just gonna sit there and it won't bother you. But it's really nice and handy to have a kickstand sometimes, just to keep the bike upright when you're packing your stuff or uh, adjusting the gears. It has a place to mount your fenders, rear rack, bottle cage. You can put a bottle cage here or a rack. When I started doing bikes, I was just selling frame sets only 
or custom frames, and then later on frame sets, and then we'd build those into bikes, and eventually we have the complete bikes now. This is the frame you'd buy if you were building a custom on your own, or if we were building one for you. What's the difference? They're both LWBs. They both have the same geometry. The main difference that you can see is the bottom bracket. This has an eccentric bottom bracket. This is a machined one-piece chunk in there uh, that can be rotated to change where the bottom bracket center is so you can tighten the chain on a single speed. It also does let you move the bottom bracket height a little bit. On the frame for the complete bike, it has a standard English threaded bottom bracket shell, and this saves a lot of weight. It actually saves enough weight that this frame and this frame, same frame, weighs less than this frame. And this frame has thinner walled tubing and the whole frame has been heat treated so the thinner wall tubing can be stronger. By doing a post weld heat treatment, I can use thinner tubing because it's a little harder and uh, it saves some weight. But because this one doesn't have an eccentric, it still weighs less, even though it has slightly thicker tubing, which will be a little tougher against dings and dents, but it doesn't have a full post heat treatment, but the strength is still there because it's a little thicker. So it's lighter and it's just as strong. It's just manufactured differently and it doesn't have the eccentric. This is a really awesome frame. It's, 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 as, it's better than this in some ways and you get it with the complete bike. I've had many people ask me if buying one of the complete bikes was worth it or if they should spend more to get the other frame because the other frame was so much better. And I would say, no, this is a wonderful frame. This is a great frame. Just get the bike and modify that if you want. Look at the rear dropouts. Same dropouts, same disc tab, same really nice welds. The paint is a little different. But then that bottom bracket, bottom bracket's really different. You can buy a, you can buy a frame set or you can buy a complete bike with a really nice frame set and uh, ride a Jones bike. If, and, uh, if, and if I don't cover something here, just email us, let me know. I'm not going over everything, so if you have questions, just contact us, give us a call. So there they are, the new LWB version three complete bikes in stock now. You know, so if you're looking for a bike and you like riding, you know, again, what are my bikes for? What are Jones bikes for? They're for people who love to ride. And high performance riding is for everybody because riding for fun is serious business and having good brakes, having big tires, having a comfortable position so you can ride all day. It's good for riding and uh, you can use them for lots of things. So some, I don't know what else to say about them. All I can say is people say it's the only bike they need. A lot of my customers will say they don't ride their other bikes anymore. They don't touch their drop bar bikes. They don't touch the skinnier tired bike. They don't ride their old 90s mountain bike anymore because once they get on this and ride it, the position is so comfortable. The traction and the brakes are so good that it's just a joy to ride and they can ride longer. And I feel the same way because I was in more pain with my hands on my back 25, 30 years ago when I was riding more uncomfortable leaned over bikes with skinnier rims, higher pressure tires and all that than I am now at an older age. I can get on this thing and just run over rough bumps at higher speeds than I ever could on my other bikes. Even when I had sus full suspension, uh, older full suspension bikes with skinnier rims, it was still a rougher ride. This is super comfy, but fast and uh, good riding bike. So if you're wondering what it's for, it's as simple as that. It's a regular, plain, high performance bicycle that's good for whatever you want to do. As long as you're not trying to do tech technical sprints, tactical sprints and breaking away from the group. If you're trying to do that, these big wheels just don't accelerate like that. They roll great. It just takes a little more time for them to get up to their speed. Uh, really awesome on the downhills. Uh, and if you're not doing gigantic jumps that require a ton of suspension, uh, then these are good. If you're doing some jumps, you can definitely get air on this. They'll do it. If you want to ride up and down stairs, they'll do that too. So Jones LWB bikes, there they are. Read the descriptions, watch our videos, check all the links. And if you have any questions, send us an email or set up a time to talk with me or something like that. Thanks.